Hi, this is John Perkins. And I'm Craig Bell. You know, they tell us that the 911 emergency system in the United States is state-of-the-art. All you have to do is dial those numbers and you will almost instantly be connected to a dispatcher. In front of the dispatcher, they will have a readout that lists your telephone number, your address, the name that is connected with that telephone number, and the caller might not even be able to say anything, but they don't have to. Perhaps they can't speak. Perhaps they're hysterical in panic, but all they need to know is in front of them and help is on the way. So today on Take 5, we're going to talk about connecting to the help that we desperately need. You know what a blessed privilege we have, John, to be able to pray and talk to God. Yes, in Luke chapter number 11, starting in the first verse, it says, And it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. What a request. Think about this, John. They had seen him heal the sick. They had seen him touch blinded eyes, and they could see deaf ears and they could hear. Even raise the dead. Raise the dead. Wouldn't you say, you know, teach me how to do that. But all the things they saw, what impressed them the most was when they saw Jesus pray. Pray. And they said, teach us to do that. Yeah. And then, you know, the Bible teaches us in the next 25 chapters of Jesus teaching them how to pray. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Is it? Actually, it's just a few verses. It's verses two through four in that in that chapter there. The simplicity of prayer doesn't have to be complex, does it? Six little things that he taught them there, how to pray. Yes. The first thing he taught, really looking at this, is the connection that's so important if we're going to pray. He says, when you pray, say, our Father, our Father. You know, we've got to stop right there, John, because if he's not Father, if you're not in a right relationship with him, you need to get that cleared up before you go praying. Don't expect your prayers to be connecting to the Father if you're not one of his children. So you need to get connected to the Father through the family root connection. Second thing he goes off and says there, John, is he says, hallowed be thy name. The honor of that respect. John, you ever heard somebody say the man upstairs? Yeah. That really gets yeah. me because he's more than the man upstairs. Yeah. He's not that. He's God. He's yeah. holy. He's, he's awesome. And, and hallowed be his name. King of kings and Lord of lords. Right? The respect and honor. And then he says that there has to be a surrender. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We did a show on this. We talked about this a few weeks ago, how that we pray sometimes for our own will to be done, but it's thy will be done. Yeah. And God wants us to have that connection with him, like you said in the first part, but he wants us to feel comfortable to ask. And again, in Matthew chapter seven, he said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open. He wants us a personal thing between us and the father. And he wants us to be able to ask of him our very needs. Absolutely. In fact, the next verse, he says, bring our needs, doesn't he? Yes. Yes. In verse three, it says, give us day by day our daily bread. There's a lot into that, Brother Craig, because first of all, we have to realize that he knows our needs. One place in the Bible says he knows our needs before we ever ask of him. So he knows that we need our daily bread. He knows that we ate yesterday, but we're going to need a meal again today. And second of all, we have to trust in him that he will provide that daily bread. And you know, John, I think there's also an element of trusting that the daily bread he provides is the daily bread we need. Yes. Because sometimes I think we think, well, you know, I wish, I wish I had this, but maybe that wasn't what we needed. Maybe what we got was what we truly needed. Yes. And then he goes on, he says, we need to pray for forgiveness. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, he says. So forgiveness is important in our prayer. We understand that, that we need God's forgiveness. And not only that we need God's forgiveness, but we need to forgive people when they've sinned against us. Yes, as we forgive everyone. If we ask for the same measure of forgiveness that we gave each other from God, which is what we're praying here, in the same measure that I forgive my neighbor, forgive me in that measure. Yes. We would probably be in trouble, we truly, would be wouldn't we? in big trouble. So God help us. And then he says to pray for our protection. The last thing he says is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. From evil. We try to pray every morning, Brother Craig, before we go to work, that the Lord would watch over us, that he would protect us. And not only us, but our family, our church family, our friends. We, we pray that hedge of prayer to protect our loved ones. And that's what he wants us to do here. Yes. And as we look at what happened last week in FedEx, and it's still fresh on our minds with the shooting of those people, the mass shooting here in Indianapolis, it's a good time to pray for those families who are hurting and pray for protection and pray for healing in our nation as we get past this tragedy. 
keep that in your prayers as well. And don't forget, take time today to pray 